If you're anything like me, you've been sat patiently waiting for your beer to finish the fermentation process. Mine has just done that. Uh, if you wanted to see how I got to that stage in the first place, I'll leave a link up above. But now the beer is ready, it's ready to be bottled. Uh, so today I'm going to walk you through how I did just that and to hopefully uh, help you avoid the same hiccups that I came across. So to do this, you're obviously going to need some bottles. I had a one gallon demijohn, and for me that meant I needed about six or seven 330ml bottles. Um, give or take, your mileage may vary depending on how far up you filled your demijohn, how much beer you've got, etc. Um, but yeah, about six or seven worked for me. So you're going to need bottles. You're also going to need two large pots. Uh, one to hold all the sanitizer um, and the other will be for uh, extracting the beer from the Demijohn into this pot first um, and that's just so we can mix it with some priming sugar before actually bottling the beer. Um, so that's two large pots, bottles, fill one large pot up with sanitizer. You'll also need some tubing uh, and a racking cane as well. Those will help us extract the beer out of the Demijohn. So now you have everything that you need, you need to obviously then sanitize everything. Um, so starting off with the bottles, just give them a quick dunk, a rinse, uh, shake some of the sanitizer around in the bottles. And then just lay them on some kitchen roll um, and just leave them there to dry. Um, chuck all of the other bits into the sanitizer as well. So that includes the pot that you'll be using to do the first extraction and then the tubing and the racking cane as well. Once all that's done, it's time to heat a little bit of sugar with some water. The Brooklyn Brew Shop kit that I used, uh, again, I'll link the video and unboxing that up here. But that kit suggested that you use a couple of tablespoons of honey mixed in with half a cup of water, um, and that's for a one gallon batch of beer. Um, so I did just that, heated up a couple of tablespoons of honey with some water, put it into that pot that we just uh, sanitized, uh, and now we are ready to extract the beer from the Demijohn into that initial pot. And that just lets us get an even spread of that priming sugar in with our beer so that it's all mixed together before we put it into the bottles. Okay, so the next step is the hardest step and that is getting the beer out of the Demijohn and into uh, that initial pot and adding it to our priming sugar. Uh, I would heavily, heavily, heavily suggest that you fill up a, a spare Demijohn, uh, another pot of water or something similar first um, before you do all of this and you basically have a practice of extracting from one vessel to another. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to get used to, uh, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but once you've done it a couple of times, you'll find that it's actually dead easy, um, but the first couple of times are a bit hit and miss. You'll even see in this video during the initial extraction from the Demijohn into the pot, uh, that I have to go back and do it a couple of times to before I get the flow going. So yeah, we'll come on to that in a minute, but yeah, I just suggest having a, a couple of practice runs first, just to make sure and that it all goes smoothly. So for the extraction to occur, you need the helping hand of gravity. So basically that means that you need to put your beer up high and where you are extracting the beer into, down low. The greater that distance is, the better. Um, so for me, I'll put the pot into the sink. Um, I used a box, the uh, Beaver Town and Borderlands collaboration crate they sent me. Again, another video that I will link up here if you want to check the unboxing of that. Um, that was the uh, collaboration between Borderlands and Beaver Town, um, who brewed a special beer, especially for the release of that game. Um, so I'll link that up above. So yeah, I used that crate, and on top of that crate, I put the beer, and then in the sink in my kitchen, I put the pot. So that meant that there was quite a fair uh, distance between the two, um, height-wise and I knew that I was going straight into the sink so that I wasn't really going to cause much of a mess so it was sort of like a two-in-one win-win. Uh, so that's a little tip uh, for you there. For my first time doing it, that worked pretty well and meant that the mess was kept to a minimum and any liquids coming out anywhere were all just going into the sink and down the drain anyway, which is great. So in order to start the process going, effectively you need, to, um, you need something that will help pull uh, the initial load of beer out of the demijohn because it's so high up it's not just going to fall out by itself so you need something to sort of pull that through and um, so to do that we need to fill the rack and cane and the tubing up with some sanitizer so attach the tube to the rack and cane 
dip the tube down into the water. You can leave the top of the wrapping cane sticking out of the pot. But if you stick the tubing into the big pot of sanitizer uh, and just wriggle it around in there, uh, make sure that sanitizer flows through all of the tubing and there's no air bubbles in there and that all comes, uh, that's just a clean tube full of sanitizer. Uh, and use um, the, the stopper tool that comes with it um, that you can use to close the tubing off to stop any liquid coming out. So once that tube's full of water, you clamp uh, the stopper down, that'll prevent any water coming out and make sure you keep the racking cane higher than the tubing. And what you should be left with is a racking cane with uh, water just at the start of where the racking cane and the tubing connect and then water that sanitized water going all the way through the tubing. Once you have that uh, you should be good to put the racking cane in the beer and the tubing down lower it towards your pot. Obviously the initial stream of water will be sanitized water and um, you obviously don't want that realistically in your beer if you can help it. Uh, obviously a little bit won't hurt but uh, you don't want the majority of that to go elsewhere. Um, so for me, I just poured the initial bit down the sink. But yeah, once the sanitizer is quickly gone out of the tube, uh, keep an eye on it. You'll see the beer start to be poured through and then you can quickly point it into uh, the pan that's in the sink and then start uh, extracting the beer. Now, if you're anything like me, you may have a uh, slight issue at this stage as you'll see uh, in the following clip. But yeah, basically I got part way through. It started extracting the beer out um, but then it stopped and that's just because um, there wasn't enough power um, to pull it through in the tubing which meant that I'd either not put enough liquid in it or there were still bubbles in there so it wasn't um, pulling at great enough force. Um, so effectively I just needed to take the tube out, fill it back up with sanitizer again and put it back into the beer and start the process again and this time I made sure I angled it a little bit better, um, it was all pointing from top to bottom, um, it was more of a direct straight line. Um, so the pull could be a lot smoother and easier uh, and this time as you see it drains uh, all of the beer out. Like I said it's a good thing to practice this a couple of times before you do it. So even the previous two runs um, when I was practicing it worked perfectly actually when it came to the real thing it didn't quite go as planned um, which is why yeah you always best to practice but as you can see it's easily fixed and providing there's a fair amount of liquid left in the damage arm, it's not a problem. It's only if you get to the very, very bottom um, and there's not a lot of liquid left that it will have a hard time pulling that through. So now you should be in a situation where there is no beer left in your damage on and there is beer in the pot that contains the priming sugar. So that's all there nicely mixed together. Um, you can now discard the damage on and leave that till later. Uh, and we need to do the exact same process again, but this time we're extracting the beer from the pot and into bottles. So we move the pan up to the highest point again, where we just moved our damage on from, uh, and now it's up there. Um, it's in a position where we can again extract and pour the beer through using the help of gravity. We need to take our sanitized bottles. I recommend lining them up so it's easy to just move the tubing from one bottle to another without having to um, faff around too much in between uh, bottles. You need to get some sanitizer back in the tubing and the racking cane so that's ready to start pulling through. Uh, and then you start the process again. So you put the racking cane into the beer and the tubing down towards the sink or towards your sanitizer to get rid of that initial bit of sanitizer that is now sat in the tubing. You loosen the clamp so that um, sanitizer starts running through. Once you start seeing beer trickle through, just bang that uh, tubing into your first bottle uh, and fill it up as far as it will go. So remember to move fast uh, because it comes out quite quickly. Uh, remember you've always got the clamp at the end so you can clamp it close if at any point you need to pause the process. Just remember to leave the racking cane where it is so that um, the flow will continue uh, once you clamp again. I found that once I got towards the end of the extraction process and because you're in a pot and obviously the pot is um, quite a lot flatter that your wrecking cane is not going to be able to touch right to the bottom so to get that extra last bit of liquid out uh, you'll need to tilt the pot and ensure that the wrecking cane is within there. Um, again I'd recommend doing this um, or getting someone to help do it so that the wrecking cane always stays um, within the water within the liquid and that's because you just don't want it to um, start pulling air through because that will stop the pulling process and you'll have to restart the whole thing again. Um, so yeah, it's key to make sure that that racking cane always stays in contact and within the liquid um, so it's always pulling something through. Uh, and that'll just keep a nice continuous stream through as you're boiling in 
I bottled fairly conservatively to begin with and then um, found that once I had a little bit left I just topped up a couple of the bottles that were looking lower than the others. And yeah, that was the process done. Uh, slightly less painful than I expected, but still a tricky process nonetheless. Just practice, practice, practice before you start. Uh, that helped me a lot and just build my confidence up to go ahead and just get on with this. After you've been waiting for this beer for so long, the last thing you want to do is waste it uh, by um, just pouring half it down the drain or just not bottling it properly. So yeah, uh, good to practice first. And yeah, once it's done, you then have that relief of having bottled beer that can just sit there and it can condition in the bottle for a couple of weeks and before you crack one open. Uh, and that's it, that is the process complete. So now I have beer, it's sat in bottles, and the next thing to do is again to just painfully wait and pray to the gods of beer that they do not explode from overcarbonation. So hopefully you have fermented your beer properly. Um, hopefully you've waited long enough for the fermentation process to complete before bottling, and you do not want to cause any little bottle bombs. Um, but for safety, I've used the BU Town and Borderlands uh, collab crate um, to store my beer because it'll be nice and dark in there, um, which is important. Uh, you want to keep your beers somewhere dark whilst they are just conditioning in the bottles um, because the, the light doesn't do the hops any favours, so it's always best to just keep it in a dark place until you're ready to drink it. So I'm going to use that box. Uh, it's got a sealed lid, so if there are any accidents, there are any minor explosions, um, at least it will all be contained within that box and I will not have a horrible mess to deal with um, in my office. So that is the beer bottling process. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. Um, as I said, I'll link all the videos I've talked about within this below. That includes what was in the um, Brooklyn Brew Shop kit, um, the initial brewing process, so that's getting the beer um, brewed and into the Demijohn ready to start fermenting. Uh, and also the Beaver Town and Borderlands collab for the Bandit Brew Beer brewed, uh, especially for the launch of the Borderlands 3 game. That's it for this video. If you have any questions before you go into the bottling process and would like to hit me up, just leave those comments down below. If there are any other useful tips that you have that you think I've missed, um, leave them down below again and I'll share them in a future video. I'm thinking of doing a video on all the beginner tips and tricks um, that are useful for anyone starting their own brew. So yeah, that's been it for today. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.